What's up guys and welcome back to our Mustang. On today's episode we're going to cover swapping out the oil pan, putting on our pickup tube and getting rid of this uh, leaky pan that's making a mess of my shop. So let's get to it. All right so this motor has never ran so these lifters aren't really made it up to any lobes yet so it doesn't matter what order I pull them out or put them back but these got to come out. I had to order some different push rods. I had some 80 thou wall thickness and I need 120s according to the head manufacturer. So still waiting on those to come in. I'm gonna pull these, sit them aside, uh, pull my headers off real quick, flip the engine upside down and show you how to swap the oil pan and pickup tube. So my engine builder, really like him, real cool guy, it's the local guy here, uh, usually does LS stuff. I thought he was doing me a favor when he slapped the oil pan on and sealed it and did all the corners and everything. But you can't put the timing cover on one of these Fords with the oil pan in place. You, just, you can't do it. So I left it on and just loosened it up when I did my timing cover just because I already knew I had to replace the oil pan and it was leaking here. I'll show you guys that in a second. But uh, I'm gonna pull this thing off and we're gonna prep it and get the new one on there. I don't wanna straight put this company on blast, although if you watch enough of my videos, you'll probably catch who made it. I would I not guess. recommend this oil pan. I thought I was saving a few bucks when I got it. It wasn't the most expensive option out there. Um, as you can see, over well to this one to miss a spot and they might have missed more than that that's the only one that I know that's leaking but I have never filled this thing up with oil and I've had a puddle over there ever since I put this engine together just from the assembly oil so I waited for the back order to get this one swapped out for quite some time um, it's actually supposed to show up in a couple days finally, but I am completely impatient and I gotta get this motor in the vehicle, so I ordered another one. All right, so this is cool. I haven't ever got a C in here yet. Um, there's my Melling standard pressure high volume oil pump. Um, I'm not gonna be pulling that off. There's just a paper gasket underneath. You put your two bolts in and the oil pump rod, there's probably a more official name for that goes in and that's what the distributor drives to run your oil pump. If you forget that on these Ford engines, you're gonna blow your engine. So I'll show you what it looks like from the top when it's installed, but don't forget that while you're down here. And then the pickup tube comes off the two bolts. I believe there's a paper gasket behind that as well. We're gonna swap that out. I had to get a different one to match my pan. Of course it was more expensive. And uh, I put this engine girdle in well, my builder put the engine girdle in. It's a trick flow engine girdle. You gotta do a little clearancing over here. You get it in and, uh, and it, uh, it looks nice. I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with the work underneath here. Let's get rid of this. We got a new one. So let me bring you guys in here for a second. So we got to put some sealant in these corners here. We have nothing to remove. Um, we're going to put some either silicone or uh, actually we're going to put some uh, RTV on these seams right here when we put our new seal down. And back here, we're going to also put some RTV here on those little corners inside there on our seal and uh, I gotta scrape all this old stuff out first. And then I'm gonna replace the seal on the little paper seal on this. I'm just gonna scrape it off with a razor blade, clean it up and get the new pickup tube put back on. So 
So I'll point out something real quick, just for the fun of it. Inside right there, you can see it very well, maybe a little tiny bit. There's a spring in there. That is the bypass spring. Um, I don't know a lot about those, why you should or should not change them. I know my engine builder told me to leave the stock one. A lot of guys say leave the stock ones but your pump usually comes with two springs and that's where it is if you want to swap it out. Just FYI. All right, so we have our Moroso pickup tube that's matched to the oil pan going on. And I'm gonna slap this in there real quick. Make sure to put the gasket there. Just using grade eight hardware with block washers. That's what my engine builder used. And we're gonna put those in there. Now I could tell this guy used some red Loctite. I think those things were a little more locked in place than they probably needed to be. I mean, they came out. He used it pretty sparingly, but using lock washers too. I don't think it's a concern at all. But just for fun, we're gonna put a dab of this blue on there. Well, we got some clearance and issues here. I'm gonna mark this out a little bit and see if I can't do a little trimming and make it fit. So I think we're gonna start with those scribe lines right there and take from there. Well, I forgot to put my time lapse on, but that's okay. The video's gonna end up being a little longer than it probably really needed to be for oil pan. But it does show you guys sometimes what you gotta do. Um, so, <laughs> I'm not in love with the way I did this, but hopefully I'm just gonna have to take these corners off and it's gonna slip right on, that's the plan. So, I got this um, sheeted up with a scrap sheet. Pretty much this is a one shot deal. Once I pull this off, I'm throwing this one in the trash. If I gotta do it again, starting over with a new one. So let's, uh, let's see how we do. All right, let's see if we got lucky on the first shot. I'm not holding my breath. We're definitely significantly closer. I'm not certain how well you can see this, but we are actually pretty close. All right guys, so it's a new day. Sun's back out, changed my clothes. Um, I was up last night late, trimming away at this girdle to get everything to fit. Now, I don't think I trimmed too much. It's not what I'm getting at here. But I will offer some advice if you guys ever would attempt something similar to what you've seen me do, that by the way, you should probably not do. Um, when you're getting it to fit, I would advise doing it without the uh, gasket in place. Because the gasket, this thing kind of squeezes into place and the gasket made it a little too tight where it was kind of hard to determine when I was trying to fine tune it whether I was actually in place or if I still needed to trim more I was putting tape across the girdle to kind of 
figure out if it was uh, scraping or not. So anyway, what I'm getting at here is do it without the gasket, get it to fit without the gasket, and make it so you can kind of get a full, like little, little rotation all the way around your bolt holes all the way. Then you know you're good to go. So I'm confident that this is not touching anywhere. So now when I throw the gasket underneath, it lifts it up just a speck. We have clearance everywhere. We're not testing, we're not buying in, we're not nothing. We are good to go. So, okay. So the next thing I want to show you guys. You are supposed to have approximately a quarter inch to half inch clearance underneath between the pickup tube and the bottom of your pan. So I got these little mag shims. I've already kind of pre-done this off camera. I know that these are about three eighths of an inch stacked together. I'm going to pull this up. People do this with clay. Now I got a, light, a nice flat surface. These things are magnetic. I'm gonna sit them on top there. Drop this down. And I'm gonna go get the camera and show you guys. Right here we're sticking up just a speck. And I don't know if I can do this with one hand or not, but it's, it's about the thickness of my gasket. So I got 3 8 inch clearance. That's dab smack in the middle of what our parameters are. So we're good to get this installed. Now I know from watching Engine Masters that if you overfill your oil pan, you're leaving power on the table. So I'm gonna fill this with water up to the little windage tray. I know these are front stumps and they're, they're not the ideal setup, but it's what has to go in this car. We're gonna see what we come up to. All right, so my camera died, but I put six quarts of oil in this. When I hold it up level, we're pretty much right, right underneath that windage tray, like right to it. So I'm kind of curious what you guys think. I'm gonna go ahead and throw seven quarts in here. This is a seven quart pan. And that's, see if I can get a good shot of this. That's where it puts me right there. So, I'm curious, what do you guys think I should run? Six or seven? Leave a comment below. Obviously, once we start running the car, we kind of see how it performs a little better. We can watch our pressure, see what it does at higher RPMs, see if we're having any uh, windage issues. But uh, yeah, leave me a comment, see what you guys think. All right, so even though I'm very satisfied that I did not get any shavings whatsoever in my engine, because I was very, very careful. I'm going to crank my engine 90 degrees and blow it out every 90 degrees until I put it back down to top dead center from the bottom. It's blowing it out down there just in case a speck of anything got down there, give it a chance to clear itself out. So let's get one last more good look underneath here before we button it up. Hopefully this is the last time we're gonna see it for a very long time. Looking good, nice and clean. Check to make sure I didn't leave any burrs, anything that could create any debris. Everything's nice and snug. And we're gonna re-clean the surface, wipe it down one more time. And uh, although it's, it's about as dry as can be right now. Um, we're going to get this pan put on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and wipe this surface down one last time. Just make sure it's nice, free of any debris. All right, I should do it. Bait, but I'm going to use the Ultra Gray from Permatex. And there's six spots I want to put it. I'm going to put one on each side here down in the corner there on these mating surfaces where the timing cover makes up and back here in the back in the corners as well so I'm gonna go ahead and get that into place so that's 
what it should look like right there. And same thing on the other side. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our gasket into place. And we have four larger bolts. Those go on the corners by the crank. Not making anything tight at this point. Just purely alignment at this point. Now I just realized I forgot to do something. All of my bolts are stainless steel. So they all need a little anti-seize on them before they go in. So I'm gonna put all the other ones in and I'll pull those out before I tighten anything down. And we'll get them all lubed up. Now we're going to work our way from center out to the edge, torquing everything down. We're going to start out with five foot pounds. Now I'm going to go back around, same pattern, torque everything down to 10 pounds. All right, I'm gonna flip it over here in a second, take the tape off. The tape was just so my tool that I was using wouldn't slap the side of the pan, kind of nick it up. But uh, this is my second time putting on a oil pan. And I used a torque wrench. It was too big last time. I had it set to the proper poundage, but I felt like it was gonna strip out all the bolts. I backed off on a whole bunch of them and didn't really actually use the torque wrench, I guess, because I got scared I was going to break everything. And it leaked. That's the engine that's in there. So I had to get back underneath there, tighten it down, and it doesn't leak anymore. All good to go. But this time, I used one that reads in inch pounds. So I did it to 10 pounds. So it's just uh, you just divide whatever the inches is by 12. That gives you your foot pounds. So I did 120 inch pounds divided by 12. That's 10 foot pounds and tighten this thing down and it did a really nice job these are smaller fasteners so you got to be more careful with them and yeah that's the way to do it hey,